It's Friday, and we're looking at what's going on around the country. Two areas to watch in the tropics right now. Of course, Aaron is the big story, but we're also watching this disturbance that's moving very close to the Texas-Mexican border. Also today, some severe weather possible across the northern plains into parts of the upper Midwest. We're going to dig into those details as well. That moisture moving into Texas today into tonight could bring some heavy rain along south texas along the rio grande and we're also dealing with that monsoon moisture moving north as well into parts of the southern rockies into the far southwest look at all of this moisture that's going to be moving into texas again some heavy rain possible here but i'm going to let this play out because this sort of tells the story not just of what's going on across the country but look at this monster aaron's still expected to become a major hurricane we're going to talk about those forecast details too but uh yeah definitely showing up here on the precipitable water map i do want to push this ahead in time because the forecast is for aaron to get sucked up to the north just off the coast certainly good news i'm not turning my back on this yet we're going to dig into that and show you exactly why but i want to really widen things out and take you beyond this weekend almost beyond next weekend because the upper level pattern starts to shift up a little bit check this out right here could come a taste of fall as we head into the end of the month. Some drier air. And even if the air isn't much cooler, this will definitely feel quite a bit better for parts of the Midwest as we push some of that moisture out. And long range, I mean, who knows beyond this, but we're moving into September as we begin that downhill slide toward fall. Some strong storms possible today. Some of those will move through parts of Wisconsin into parts of Iowa as we head into this evening and to tonight. Tomorrow will be another active day. These storms will be a little bit further to the east. More storms across Minnesota, across Wisconsin. Some damaging winds possible with these, some hail. The Storm Prediction Center is watching this region across parts of Minnesota, also North Dakota, down into South Dakota, even as far west as northern Utah and Wyoming. The risk for some tornadoes is possible especially the further north you go along the south dakota minnesota border and as we head into tomorrow we're going to do it again with more severe weather it kind of stretches a little bit further to the east into parts of michigan and it still continues back to the west and this starts to drop a little bit further to the south i think into parts of iowa Take a look at these storms as we head into this afternoon. These will start to blossom up across Minnesota. There could even be more as we head into tonight across South Dakota, Nebraska. Again, damaging winds, some hail possible with these. And look, some of this lingers into Saturday. We could have an ongoing complex of thunderstorms moving through this area through the early morning hours, and some of that could linger. Let's talk about the upper level pattern because this is what's going to be driving the weather over the next several days. And hey, if you like this kind of stuff, digging into the details, especially as we look at weather patterns, subscribing doesn't cost you a thing. And uh, if you're looking for a weather source on YouTube, it's free 99. Hope you'll come back. All right, here's what we're looking at across the tropics. Here comes Aaron. This is the operational run of the European. There's your weakness starting to develop in that ridge in the upper levels. We've seen that showing up the last couple of days. It's still showing up in the overnight run of the European. That's going to allow Aaron to move north. The question is, how far west does it go? There's starting to be some consensus. You're also starting to see it in the spaghetti plots when you look at the European. Look, all the clusters now, almost all of them out to sea. The GFS on board with this idea too. Here's the official forecast from the Hurricane Center. It's still expected to become a major hurricane as it moves just to the north and west of the Bahamas. We're still going to see some impacts across this region as this storm is going to be huge. But look, a couple of the ensemble guidance members, this is the operational run or the ensemble run rather of the AI, European version of the AI, still trying to put a few clusters into the southeast. You can clearly see where most of them are, but a few outliers still there. That's too close for comfort to, for me. The GFS ensemble is also bringing a few a little too close to the coast for comfort. This would bring some coastal impacts. And even if this thing stays way out to sea, we're going to see some big surf and potentially some coastal problems as we head into the weekend and to next week. All right, rain across the Pacific Northwest. We've talked about this monsoon flow across the far southwest and we'll work our way east across the country. This is going to bring some cooler weather across the Pacific Northwest as this front moves through. Temperatures on the way down, feeling kind of nice we'll keep the showery weather too into the cascades east of the mountains we will start to dry out some temperatures across the west a little bit cooler i'm going to advertise this just a little bit across the southwest because if we can get some clouds and we get those monsoon showers going temperatures will be knocked back a little bit heading into tonight it stays hot across the southwest you can see some of that cooler air starting to work into the pacific northwest with highs in the 60s 70s and 80s versus the 90s and even 100s as we get east of the mountains in this part of the country. 
back into the central U.S. We've looked at some of this, but some other areas we've not really talked about much into Oklahoma, into also Arkansas. There could be a few pop-up storms in this area where there's some weakness in the capping, but otherwise, that upper level high keeping things pretty warm and dry. Everything, look at that, circulating around it. This flow, by the way, you can sort of see it here. That is actually what's going to help to keep Aaron out to sea. It's one of the components, right? Your wind's coming in like this. It's going to be working opposite of where the storm wants to go. So we do have that, I guess, uh, as a silver lining to what's happening with Aaron. Here's a look at your temperatures today. Blistering hot. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just going to be miserable again across parts of the Central Plains. Even into Missouri, we're talking about mid-90s, and that heat spreads further to the east heading into the weekend. Another hot one. If you're done with summer, at least in your mind, you're not going to be done with it in reality as we head through the weekend. Temperatures hot all the way through Sunday. Further to the east... Let's go uh, in, into the upper Midwest. We've talked about this cluster of storms as we move into today. There could also be a few showers across North Georgia. And we've got this low here off of the East Coast. Some of that bringing some cooler air right along the coast, but otherwise relatively quiet, I guess, compared to how active it seems to have been lately across this part of the country. Cold front starts to drop in from the north as we head into Sunday. That's going to bring a better chance of rain into Michigan, Ohio, also into parts of the northeast as we head into, I think, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening across this part of the country. And here's a look at your temperatures for today. If you're planning your weekend, yeah, it's going to be hot again. And that heat, again, building back into the Tennessee Valley. Numbers climbing back into the low to mid-90s in some areas. Even the northeast warming up well into the 80s, especially uh, into the lower elevations. And then Sunday, another hot one. Even D.C. getting very close to 90. Philadelphia up to New York. Boston. We're baking too. A little bit above average, certainly for this time of year. And I know it's still summer. You know, yesterday or a couple of days ago, we were looking back at the snow maps from last winter. What does this winter hold? And I'm just going to tell you, some folks are saying, hey, uh, what's the winter forecast looking like? Well, I don't think it's going to look like last year whatsoever. Boy, last year was a real anomaly. Not only did we see some pretty big snows across the deep, deep south, we also saw quite a few areas not maybe getting as nearly as much snow as we normally do. This winter looks like we're going to be in a La Nina pattern, maybe at least a weak La Nina, if not neutral as far as the ENSO goes. But one thing that I'm continuing to watch, I want to give you a quick update. This is really moving it through April and May. You can see the blue. That's the snowpack melting across North America. The yellow or the orange, depending on the screen tone you have, that's the sea ice. Look how it's breaking up north of Alaska, very normal as we head through July and August. But it really has started to slow here, at least with the south extent of it. You know, if you look at the long range upper level pattern too, this is something that I think you watch as you start to put together an idea of what winter might look like. How much sea ice do we see melt? Because that bridge that you get here, if you can keep it cold enough across the North Pole, or at least right here along the Arctic Sea that borders Siberia and Alaska, the colder you can keep it, the more ice you keep around. Let's wait and see how all this shakes out. That's something that I'm just looking at almost on a day-to-day -day basis. But right now, I think there's still some more melting to happen here in the Arctic Sea. That may impact winter a little bit, but listen, there's also the chance that it turns cold here. And if that happens, we really start to arrest that melting of the ice. It's just one factor as we head into winter, right? There are all other factors too. What's going to be happening with this Pacific jet? Is it going to continue to scream into the Northwest? Which I'm telling you, if it gets cold here, the ocean water is pretty warm here. That may really shunt that cold air moving south. We saw that last year with that screaming Pacific jet just locking in any chances for a lot of cold air to move south. Uh, not all winter. Clearly, we saw some pretty big cold outbreaks, but... It's one of the things I'm watching.